When Mark sets up a story in his gospel, there are a lot of little things that happen in the gospel to give you a clue as to what is important. And so what happens here at the beginning of the story is it says that the scribes and Pharisees, so this is Mark's code word for the super religious, okay? It's not meant for us to, to decide all Jews are bad and not what this gospel is about. This gospel is about inclusion and welcome, and Jesus is Jewish. And he isn't saying, get rid of the scribes and Pharisees. He's calling the scribes and Pharisees to be different, to become different than what they are, because they've created a world that has created boundaries, a sacred spot and space that sets them apart from the Roman Empire. But Jesus said when they created those boundaries, when they created the borders that designate this group of people Jewish and that group of people outside our community, when they created those boundaries, they forgot to take into account that human beings are flawed and hurting and that God's boundaries go beyond what you have decided is acceptable. And so when it says that the scribes and Pharisees came from Jerusalem, Mark wants us, if we already know the story, to keep in mind that that's where this story is heading. This story is heading to Jerusalem where Jesus will confront the powers and when he confronts those powers, they execute him. So if we're to keep in mind that this story is leading that direction to Jerusalem and to Jesus' trial and death. And those Pharisees and scribes, when they come to Jesus from Jerusalem, we see that as one of those first entry points, right? They're gathering the evidence they need so that they can get rid of Jesus and his ideas and his theology and his understanding of what the world should be like. And so the scribes and Pharisees come up to Jesus with a challenge. They come up to Jesus and say to him, how can you eat with your disciples eat without washing your hands? Don't you know that the religious people, that it's God's commandment to eat only after you have washed your hands? So here's the thing you got to know about this. With the scribes and Pharisees, this is the idea that they have taken all these laws that Moses gave. And we only heard a little bit of the laws that Moses gave. But they took the laws that Moses gave and tried to make them stronger and larger so that they could really delineate themselves from the people who came in waves and conquered them. They used those laws to set themselves apart, but some of those laws were open for interpretation. So if you're reading the text closely, what it says is that some of your disciples didn't wash their hands. Meaning that among Jewish people, that decision that they're arguing about, that religious tenet of faith that they're saying is all important, is actually something that's open for debate because not all Jewish people follow that tenet of washing their hands. But there's another thing going on because Mark doesn't tell us anything that he doesn't feel is important and that we need to know and it needs to reflect on within ourselves. And so one of the things he said that the Pharisees say is they didn't wash their hands after being at the marketplace. So what does that call to your mind? It should remind you of the story that preceded what happened in the scripture today. And that story said that Jesus went into the farms and marketplaces where people came to him, bringing everyone who was sick to be healed. So we're to keep in our mind that they're actually saying that Jesus is unclean because he touched those people in the marketplace and healed them. They're questioning what he is doing in the name of God. 
right? They're asking questions about, does he have the ability and authority to do what he's doing? That by going into the marketplace and healing those people, he's breaking the commandments. And Jesus gets disappointed with them. He gets upset with them. He doesn't go so far as they do in Matthew and Luke, where usually Jesus screams, you brood of vipers, right? You hypocrites. But he does challenge their understanding of the law. He challenges what is the purpose of the law. Because both of them believe strongly that God God has this desire and has gifted the people of Israel with a special place, has created a royal priesthood and blessed them. And their job is to share with the rest of the world, to show the rest of the world what it could look like under God. And Jesus says, the problem is, you're saying all the right things, but you've forgotten the most important part. Your words speak of what should be, but your actions, your actions are leaving those people that Jesus healed in the marketplace behind and outside. And Jesus wants to change our actions. Because he's showing us what the in-breaking kingdom looks like. He's showing us how we can live in the world and show the world that this is how God desired us to be. And so when Jesus looks at the Pharisees, he's not saying we against them. He's calling them to change. He's calling them to transform their hearts, to move beyond their words and change their hearts so that they can live in the world where the in-breaking kingdom doesn't see boundaries that separate people from God. And so when the Pharisees don't hear what Jesus has to say, he turns to the crowd that is ever present and he says to them, there is nothing, nothing outside of you that can defile you. It is what comes from your heart that defiles you. He's opening up the kingdom, right? He's sharing with them that no matter what has happened in the past, no matter where you have been in the past, no matter all those things that are weighing you down, whether it's sickness, whether it's feeling like you're surrounded by evil, whatever it is that is stopping you, holding you back from experiencing the true, wonderful wholeness that God created for you, that, that has created your heart of hearts. And I want to open your hearts up. Your hard hearts are created by those things that come out of you. Those things that come out of you that cause pain to another person. Right? The list of things that Jesus lists are things that are about greed, they're about envy, they're about not having good relationships with other people, they're about talking to others in ways that are not compassionate and kind. He lists those things that actions that we do that cause others to hurt. So he's inviting. He's inviting us to change how we see what happens. Now, 
I do want to say an aside because this is all about washing your hands, right? Washing your hands is a very good thing and needs to be practiced. We have learned that. So even though Jesus tells you that's not the most important thing, during the era of flu season and COVID, washing your hands is a really good thing to do. But again, it's not about the hand washing, right? It's not about what makes someone clean and what makes someone dirty. It's about what is occurring in your heart. What intentions are present in there. And I think this is one of the most important lessons that we in the United States have forgotten. Right? The way we see people treating each other whenever we go outside the walls of the church has become so unkind, has become so unchristian, we have started saying the worst things we can about the other people, however we define that other. Whether we're defining it because of race and sexuality, whether we're defining it because of politics, however we're defining that person that is against us. Jesus is saying that's the part where you're creating a heart that is hard. And every one of those people, all those people that you put in the category that you don't want to interact with, that you find offensive, if you sit down with them, if you sit down with them and talk to them, if you hear their stories, the stories of their life, not the stories of their politics, the story of their life, then you're going to be moved. You're going to be moved and see them as real. But we are called to think about what comes out of our mouth. To think about what our actions do for, to others. And here now in the United States, this has gotten really bad. Like, you cannot go on your Facebook page or your Twitter feed. Instagram's usually happy, so you can probably go on your Instagram feed. And not see someone hurting another with their words or their actions. And that's the part that Jesus is telling us to change. Because that's coming out of us, right? And it's harming another. That's the part that Jesus wants transformed. He wants to transform our hearts so that when we look out at another, we don't see an enemy. We don't see someone who's wrong. We see someone who's human. Who may, like the Pharisees, need a change of heart. But it doesn't say that Jesus doesn't love them. It says that Jesus is calling them to a different way of being. And our job is to show the world what that like, right? That's the good news. That even in the messiness of life, even in the horribleness, that we're called to be a light, to share the love of God, to remind ourselves that we're to be like Jesus going into the marketplace and seeing the hurting world and doing what we can to heal it. Jesus is asking us to open our hearts that wide, to love like he loves, to forgive like he forgives, to invite it into the community all those who have been left out and left behind. Amen.